What makes someone powerful? What separates the winners from the losers, the big shots from the underdogs? Better yet, what allows an underdog to break through? Is it some glitch in the matrix? Is it sheer luck? Not really. It's remembering what you forgot. It's unearthing your power instead of letting it lie dormant. Power never leaves. We must only awaken from the spell of learned helplessness. Psychologists have taught us that learned helplessness is an issue of perseverance. We're in a bad situation. There's something that we can do theoretically to get ourselves out of it, but instead we don't do it. We give up. But the phenomenon of learned helplessness goes way deeper than a mere negative mindset or a willpower issue. To understand any form of conditioning, we need to understand the nervous system. What makes someone learn to be helpless? One, their past experience. Two, their perception about those experiences. No one gets trapped in learned helplessness because their past actions led to wild success. It's not a conscious choice. Most people with learned helplessness try really hard in one area or several areas of their life for an extended period of time and see minimal results. This directly correlates to the freeze response of the nervous system, and this is extremely important and overlooked. In the wild, animals that can't fight or flee from a predator will automatically shift into freeze, aka non-movement or numbing out. In other words, freeze is the nervous system's last resort at giving you a decent ride out of this life. People in a state of learned helplessness are in a freeze response. They're in an energy conservation mode as a survival tactic. No intelligent person would continue extending large amounts of energy toward things that are not working. From a survival standpoint, this is absurd. We would deplete all of our energy, we would run out of food, and we would be dead in no time. To quote a random smart person on the internet, when any animal, from insects to humans, is repeatedly defeated, the real problem is that the high nervous system activation is still running underneath their apparent immobility. There comes a point when it, the freeze response, needs to be discharged in bits instead of all at once. This is why it becomes impossible to act again even when the problem or threat has disappeared. For our system, the problem is considered gone only when the activation has been discharged. Researchers have observed animals coming out of the freeze response rather quickly, such as an antelope that narrowly escapes a lion. But because humans have a more developed neocortex, we tend to suppress this instinct without realizing it. Long story short, traumatic energy accumulates. We stay in freeze mode, and this symbolically plays out in our lives. So when we bring this ancient survival system into the modern world, it plays out in interesting ways. So I'll use myself as an example. When I was younger, I extended significant amounts of energy and money and effort and everything going to college to get a degree. Now, looking back, that effort was mostly wasted because I received nothing in return, not even a well-paying job. First, I tried working really hard to fight the situation and become successful. When that didn't work, I decided to try fleeing the situation, avoiding difficulties, and skirting by with the bare minimum. When I realized that wasn't going to work either, I naturally transitioned to freeze, in which I spent most of my days deeply indecisive, lost, overindulging to numb out, and just generally giving up on effort. In hindsight, my survival response was working flawlessly. A testament to how powerful the nervous system is at managing our energy and making executive decisions for us. But in the modern world, we don't have a clue, let alone compassion, for what's going on here. Someone could easily look at my example and say that I majored in the wrong thing. I didn't do enough internships or I should have went right on to grad school after graduating. 
They might say that I was lazy or simply didn't have what it takes. And in a sense, they'd be correct. My body literally didn't have what it took. And so it broke down and started expressing a myriad of symptoms. Hindsight is 2020, and this sort of feedback from other people is completely not helpful. It does nothing to resolve the person's present day dilemma, which is that the nervous system is now deeply conditioned to freeze rather than take constructive action. So what are the most important elements to resolving learned helplessness and regaining your personal power? One, try somatic therapy and or de-armoring therapy. People may tell you that the cure to learned helplessness is positive thinking, but let's be honest, if you're in this boat, you probably already tried that. Again, the body is convinced that action equals death and that energy conservation is the only option. To reiterate, your body thinks that you are a gazelle in the mouth of a lion. This goes way beyond the conscious mind and into your physiology itself. Someone like a life coach might have no ability to help you with this, but a somatic practitioner can take you right into the eye of the storm to discharge that traumatic energy. Two, process the grief. Let's face it, people with learned helplessness are dealing with major life disappointments. Nobody wants to end up feeling like a gazelle in the mouth of a lion. It weighs on your self-esteem and it makes you regret the past. Worst of all, it tends to establish a core self-concept of shame and effectiveness, which can go on to infect every area of our lives. Shame is a lie that breeds and keeps us in the shadow of life itself. Three, fixing learned helplessness doesn't have to be rocket science. Author Angela Duckworth recommends a simple rule that she herself lives by. Do one hard thing a day, just one. Her book poses the question, why do naturally talented people frequently fail to reach their potential while others, far less gifted, go on to achieve amazing things? Her answer wasn't optimism or talent, it was grit. Simply Google grit and start learning how to cultivate it. Also, don't wait until you feel good to take action. Expect that there's gonna be some or maybe a ton of resistance as you're moving through your day making decisions. If you're in the thick of learned helplessness, deciding what to have for breakfast could feel like running through a minefield of consequences. It's not that you're innately indecisive, it's that you're convinced that the decision you make is not going to work out based on past experiences. This is a traumatic pattern if you have learned helplessness. So don't dwell, and for the love of God, don't look for the perfect action to take you will drive yourself insane and further deplete your energy. Four, look for an easy win. Low hanging fruit is your best friend. What's something hard enough that you'll feel proud to achieve it, but easy enough that you won't be instantly discouraged if it doesn't go well? Oftentimes people with learned helplessness desperately need a win. Some evidence that their actions can have a positive impact on reality. Starved of this experience, they often feel like ghosts who might as well just float off into a dissociative state. This is exactly what the gazelle does seconds before it becomes dinner. But you are not dinner. An easy win can help remind you of that. Five, make friends with discipline slowly. Discipline is not your enemy, although it may seem like it is. You may assume that highly disciplined people have something that you don't. Discipline teaches that consistent effort over time yields positive results. But if you have learned helplessness, you don't believe that. Not in regards to yourself, at least. So I want you to try to think of discipline as the one that got away. Kind of like people say in romance, discipline is your one that got away if you have learned helplessness. And maybe it's time you try to win it back. Six, what are you so committed to that you would do it for the rest of your life even if it yielded no traditional success. Separate your motivation from the idea of success. Separate your worth from your achievements. Then act. People with learned helplessness are convinced that their actions will not work. But work implies that you need a certain outcome to happen. So forget about outcomes and just do what you want. Your mantra from now on is, it is okay to be this way. It is normal that this happened. This does not reflect on my character. It reflects on my life experiences and my perspective. I am a victim of classical conditioning. 
and I can decondition myself through small actions that add up over time. Long story short, you are not a gazelle in the mouth of a lion, but your nervous system doesn't know that. You've been living as Dobby, so consider this video your sock. You are free.